Good afternoon, everyone. And happy Labor Day weekend. The Spirit of the Risen Lord surrounds us in this holy place and transforms us by our sharing in today's Eucharist. Today we celebrate the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We invite you to kindly silence all cell phones and electronic devices before we begin this liturgy. Our opening hymn can be found in number 208 in the hymnal, Praise to the Lord, number 208. Please stand as we begin our celebration. Oh, you alone are the Holy One, you alone. 
prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not, here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert, and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools, and the thirsty grounds, springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. James. My brothers and sisters, 
Show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes comes, also comes in, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say, sit here please, while you say to the poor one, stand there, sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions amongst yourselves and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we look at today's gospel, we have this familiar story of Jesus enabling the mute man to speak and opening his ears so he can hear. And as we look at this, let's look at what the man was dealing with. Because of his difficulties and his challenges, he probably felt very isolated and cut off from the people around him. It was hard for him to engage in conversation and figure out what people were trying to tell him. And it was hard for other people to try to figure out what he was trying to say to them. It must have been very frustrating. And I think in one way or another, all of us have felt a sense of loneliness or isolation in our lives for different reasons. Not always for the physical reasons that this man faced, but think about the pandemic when we were all stuck at home. And for those of you that are joining us through cyberspace, you might be stuck at home still for one reason or another. 
And being at home for a lot of people is a real challenge. Um, when, when I was sick, I was stuck at home for a while, and um, there, there were things that I liked about it. I liked having the time by myself, and um, reading, and watching TV, and praying, and uh, having time alone with my father, my brother. But not everyone deals with being at home the same way. Not everyone processes being alone the same way. People need different amounts of alone time. And for some people, being alone in any way is really traumatic for them. And so Jesus was really reaching out and meeting this man's need in a profound way. He saw that this man was cut off from the people around him. And he reached out and touched the man gave him that human contact that he needed and opened up the pathway for others to reach out. And Jesus does that so many times in our lives. Yes, sometimes when we're sick and suffering, we, we pray to the Lord and um, our prayers are definitely heard. They're not always answered in the way that we expect or in the way that we ourselves might want. But Jesus always does unite us with the greater community under God. The greater world, the greater universe, the kingdom of God, however you want to look at it, Jesus always connects us to one another, even when we're stuck at home. If you think about it a moment, you might be home alone, but you're praying, right? And if you're praying, even though you're in your house by yourself, your prayers are united with all the other people in the world. We're all praying together the same prayers. We're praying together as a church, even when we physically can't be together. Lifting one another up in prayer, caring for one another. And that love, that care, that grace of God breaks down all of the barriers that keep us from one another. Even when we struggle, especially when we struggle, we see God's hand lifting us up if we place our trust in Him. And that's what this deaf mute man did. He trusted in the Lord. He came to the Lord and asked for Jesus' help. And Jesus knew what He needed. Jesus knows what we need. Let us turn to Him with our burdens. Let us lift up our struggles so that He can unite us so that we won't face things alone. Jesus promised elsewhere in the Gospels that he would share our burdens, that if we shared our burdens with him, our burdens would be light, our yoke would be easy. As we struggle with this pandemic, with all of the challenges that we face in life, let us bring those struggles, let us bring our grief, our loneliness, our pain, all of those things to the Lord and unite them in prayer with one another so we're not alone. Let Jesus break down that barrier of loneliness. Sin can also cause loneliness. Sin cuts us off from one another and from God. And if we pray to the Lord, if we ask for Jesus' help, he can give us that, that healing. That's what happens when we go to confession. We pray that God give us the grace to know and to experience his forgiveness, and that breaks down the wall of sin. As we yearn for God's help in our lives, whenever we celebrate any of the sacraments, be it mass, anointing of the sick, marriage, confirmation, baptism, holy orders, all of those things, it brings us together. It enables us to encounter God in a very real and profound way. Let us pray for that unity during these times of challenge. May we all know the loving presence of God in our lives. And may we all pray together that we may experience his blessings. Together we stand and profess our faith. 
I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God of true God, begotten not me, and consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation, he and him have by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became the man. For our Savior was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism in the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life in the world of God. Amen. And together we bring our prayers before the Lord. Our response will be, Lord, hear us. For the church throughout the world, may all who have been baptized into the death and resurrection of Christ be strengthened in their Christian vocation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For the tens of thousands whose lives have been devastated by Hurricane Ida, and especially for those who lost their lives, whether in Louisiana or here in the Northeast, may the Lord give his children strength to recover from so great a loss. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear us. We pray for the Afghan people and the catastrophic situation that continues in that war-torn nation. For our military personnel who have safely returned home and the unknown number of Americans and allies who remain trapped there. And for the future of the nation that has known so much pain, violence, and grief, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. On this Labor Day weekend, we pray that God will bless our work, whatever shape it may take. And for all who seek meaningful employment, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear us. For continuing progress in the struggle against the COVID-19 pandemic, particularly as our children head back to school, and for all who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear us. For those who have died, may the Lord enfold them with light and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear us. Our prayers have been asked for Dennis O'Brien, Joseph Anacrianti, Pamela Wilson, Kelly Bowles, Lucretia Rupel, Thomas Hart, and Corrine McKay as we continue our worship and for the many personal intentions that we pause now to recall. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. And as we bring our prayers to the Lord, we ask his special blessings on our students, their families, and their teachers at the beginning of this new school year. Loving God, your gentle hand guides us from one season to the next and blesses each of our new beginnings with promise and hope. As our children and young people begin a new school year, once again, the worrisome shadow of the COVID pandemic comes upon us. We ask that you take them by the hand and keep them healthy and safe through the months to come. Open their minds to the wealth of knowledge their teachers will offer them, and let them find real enjoyment in learning. May this year's discoveries leave our children eager for more. Give them the strength to handle any challenges or disappointments they may have to face. Help them to be patient with themselves when studying is hard. And in year's end, let them look back with a sense of pride and a real sense of their own special gifts. 
Bless, too, our parents and families, teachers, principals, and all who will shape the minds and hearts of our young people. May their patience, dedication, and love be the keys that unlock the door to our children's future. We ask all of these things in the name of our brother and master teacher, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please join in singing our offertory again, which is number 393, Open My Eyes, number 393. Partaking of the sacred mystery, that we may be faithful, faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We live up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we have lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we have claimed.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not afraid you should have a word. But only I say a word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing our communion hymn, which is number 587, Christ Be Our Light, number 587.
Let us pray. Grant that you are faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and this heavenly sacrament, may benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts, that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Saturday, September 11th, marks the 20th anniversary of the terrorist attacks of 9-11-2001. Mass will be celebrated Saturday morning at 9 a.m. In addition, Blessed Sacrament will be exposed for adoration that evening from the conclusion of the 5 o'clock Mass until 9 p.m. Today's bulletin includes a prayer composed by Father Brian 20 years ago on 9-11. Many of its sentiments are still very apropos today. Training sessions for new extraordinary ministers have been scheduled for late September and October. If you've been considering becoming a minister of Holy Communion here at St. Lawrence, or would just like to hear more about this beautiful role, please see the bulletin or contact the rectors. Last weekend, our music director, Joe Mankowski, announced the return of our parish choirs and asked parishioners, including our children and teens, to consider joining. Please see Joe after Mass if you'd like to hear more or leave a message for him at the rectory. A prayer for victims of natural disaster can be found on the tables by the doors. The parish offices will be closed on Monday, September 6th in observance of Labor Day. Kindly leave your weekly offering in one of the baskets by the doors. The continuing generosity of our parishioners, whether present here in person or from home, is a tremendous gift. Thank you. Don't forget to take home a copy of the parish bulletin as you leave today. Wash or sanitize your hands at the earliest opportunity and enjoy the rest of the holiday weekend. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Our closing hymn is number 385, City of God, number 385.